Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Thriving Talk. I know that we are coming after a little of a break because uh, I was traveling and uh, I was busy today, we are going to talk about that. And uh, I'm today again joined by Tim and uh, he's definitely going to lead the questions. But uh, since we are doing an episode after a long time, I thought, you know, I will start with the intro. Tim, um, how are things with you? Um, everything's going well. Okay, you want to continue with uh, the episode as you usually do? Yes. Um, a quick reminder, um, Thriving Talk is available on many different platforms like Spotify, YouTube, Google Podcasts. So make sure to follow or subscribe to Thriving Talk on those different platforms so you can know when the new episodes come out. So yeah, so I think uh, since we had a long break, starting trouble for you. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, as my dad said, we are late with this episode because um, he was traveling last week and it, like, took more time to recover. It's not about last week, it's whole I mean, last, last month. month. Yeah, last month. Yeah. yeah. Month-long travel. So, like, where did you go and, like, why did you go? Yeah, so, this is a special episode. We will go back to the topics from the next episode. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, good to reflect back on some of those things and share some experiences as we have been doing. Uh, whenever I take some major travel. So, yes, uh, in the month of February, I had the privilege to uh, go to Asia. Basically, visited three countries. Uh, first, I was in India. Then from India, I went to Sri Lanka. Then came back to India. Then went to Nepal. Then came back to India. And uh, finally, came back. Um, so, it's a, it was a combination of uh, visiting three countries. And uh, the question is why? Um, it was mostly a ministry uh, a trip. I had some invitation and I also wanted to visit some places see and meet some few people. So it was a combination of different things, different experiences. And um, yeah, it was a exciting time, but very hectic. I think uh, all all throughout the trip, I took 14 flights uh, within a span of three weeks. Um, so, you know, some places I was uh, staying for a longer time, but many places it was quick, uh, and so it was it was like that. So it was a it was an interesting trip, uh, but yeah, Asia. All right. So let's talk about India. So what were the main highlights from India, and like what did you mainly do over? Uh, one of the highlights from India is I was in the northern part of India and it was cold. Uh, but then I, when I went to the southern part of India, it was extremely hot. So, extreme weathers. Actually, in fact, throughout the, my trip, uh, that's, that was one thing which I felt like I could have planned better because um, the first week where I was staying, it was cold. Then where I went to Sri Lanka, it was hot. Yeah, went to Nepal, it was cold again and then came back to India, it was hot. Then I came back to the northern part of India, it was cold and then so the extreme weather was definitely one thing. Um, other than that, uh, I enjoyed my time in India um, a lot because of all the experiences I had and um, a couple of things which stands out is I got the privilege to speak at a convention um, for three nights. Uh, which was a uh, very good experience. Um, then I was able to speak at a family seminar. Uh, and then, uh, of course, I was also had the opportunity to spend some time with uh, uh, like about 170 plus pastors uh, from some of the places. There is a lot of challenges and difficulties. Uh, it was a three-day conference and uh, I got the opportunity to speak to them I think four times and then um, I was also the guest for two Bible college graduations uh, which was also first time in my life first e experience um, wearing all the graduation dress and uh, being there and giving the graduation message and the delivering the graduation sermon was a, indeed a great blessing so so altogether uh, India experience was good and Met so many people, um, so many people about whom I have heard or maybe I have seen in some other publications or some other places. It was good to meet them in person. 
um, and also just uh, just being there with the people and uh, just knowing them and understanding the challenges which people are facing uh, in different places uh, that was indeed a, a great blessing um, so that's those are the, some of the highlights uh, I think from my time in India of course the food uh, across the board you know I, I think I took some pictures I should share with uh, all of you um, you know when you travel uh, sometimes you get that opportunity to experience and eat um, different food if you are really traveling but if you are staying in some place and all then it becomes pretty stable and uh, uh, you know not not too many changes but when when you are frequently you know going from one place to another and sometimes you have to eat outside then you have more options of picking and choosing and trying new things so so this time it was uh, uh, i think i had some good experience of uh, having some food which i uh, have never had in my life too so so yeah it was it was good so after india you mentioned going to sri lanka and like um you said the people there have, like they go through many challenging times so how is everything now over there and like what do you have to share from sri lanka yeah my trip to sri lanka i've gone there you know i think at least two times in the past but every time i have been in colombo and then Candy, but this was the first time I had an opportunity to go to Jaffna. Um, so Jaffna is like uh, known for uh, many reasons, uh, you know. And then all over Sri Lanka, you know, yes, people who follow news or who are aware of these things, they know that uh, Sri Lanka had been going through a very hard economic times. You know, economically, they have been going through a lot of challenges in the past few years. They had to take help from others and. Uh, the prices are very high. People are finding it difficult to survive. Uh, some people were sharing some uh, cost of living uh, challenges. So it's, 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 it's very expensive, especially in some places. But the place where I went, it was not as bad as, you know, Colombo or other places. But uh, still people are uh, having a lot of challenges over there. And um, I think the job is not that much there and then uh, of course, the expenses are very high, uh, but still uh, people are surviving, people are moving on with life in general, but um, I think still they are going through those challenging times and I hope and pray that uh, uh, the whole nation will be able to come out of those challenges they are facing and uh, there will be you know, good times uh, where people will find hope and uh, you know, security in what they are, um, you know, within the within the country. Um, so there is a there is there is a lot of things going on. And I was there, and I was um, speaking to uh, a big group of young people. Um, so it just happened that I almost students spoke for six hours in a day, and it was really hot. It was really hot. You know, um, I went there and. So they had like four sessions scheduled and it was like 45 minutes, then a break, 45 minutes. So it was, um, it was a humbling experience um, in many ways. Uh, actually, I got a little sick after that because um, that night I was so tired that I went back to hotel after or the place where we were staying. Up. I turned on the AC and I just slept. So early morning, I think early hours, I woke up shivering because... Uh, you know, it was too cold by then because AC was running and then I had to turn it off. So, um, as I was leaving Sri Lanka, I was not feeling that great, but nothing major, but it was just too much of tiredness and the weather fluctuation and all this stuff has um, impacted. But otherwise, um, it was a very blessed trip and uh, as always, the food in Sri Lanka is very good. I like it. Um, so, we, we had some time, um, you know, but uh, overall, I think uh, it was a, a blessed time. Beautiful country in many sense. It looks very beautiful in many sense, but also impacted by the war and other issues which they had in the past. So still, I think uh, the people are recovering from that. It's not completely, um, the recovery has not happened completely, but I think uh, very soon they will, they should be able to come out, but again, uh, there are a 
lot of challenges there. So moving on to Nepal now, how was it over there? Um, Nepal, um, again, this was my second time in Nepal. Uh, but the, the good thing is this time I spent time in Kathmandu. Um, so yeah, the travel was long from Sri Lanka because we had to come back to India, then travel, you know, to Delhi and then stay there that night and then the next day morning was a flight. Uh, apart from that, the experience of entering Nepal was all good. Again, a beautiful country, uh, very much impacted by natural calamities and other issues which have happened in the past years especially the earthquake and all those uh, things. So it was evident that um, there are challenges, but uh, it's, it's a beautiful mountain. Even on the plane when you're going, you can see some beautiful uh, scenes from through the window. And um, otherwise, it was a, it was a good time. Uh, there were multiple avenues uh, where I could uh, speak and uh, encourage especially some young students and all um, I, I know that you know could sense that they were they are all going through uh, many challenges uh, you know difficulties people want to go out just like it's happening in many many places youngsters want to leave the country and um, you know, go and look for a job somewhere else um, so it was it was a it was a good experience and again there I could meet so many people um, you know, understand uh, more about the culture and um, many, many aspects. So, but the, the biggest challenge I had was when I reached there, I was not feeling that great. It's not like I had fever or anything like that, but it was too much tired. I think one week of uh, hectic time in Delhi and then going back to, going to Sri Lanka and then what I just shared, everything just took a toil on my body, I guess. And then uh, but the good thing is I could sleep a lot there and uh, but by the time I was leaving there I was all good it was fine and but I think the time I spent there uh, it was more about uh, you know taking some rest I uh, wanted to see some sightseeing but didn't get a chance or the time because the, then also I was not feeling that good but otherwise it was a it was a blessed time I uh, hope that uh, Nepal will also recover from all the setbacks they had in the past, and uh, um, you know it will be it will be a good uh, experience over there for people who live there. But altogether, I, I I would like to go back and maybe if I get a chance to spend more time, uh, you know, maybe visiting some other places over there. But it was good. So, is there like anything that stands out like big to you from this trip that you took? Um, there are many things which stands out. I think um, uh, the one of the biggest thing was, I guess, um, I, I got opportunities to be in places where it was significant. Like for example, the, one of the places where I was ministering for a few days, uh, it was the same place where, you know, maybe about 2003, yeah, about 20 years ago, I attended a camp. Uh, you know, there and the youth came there and that was a touching experience for me to just go back there and now um, speak to people and you know, for, you know at that time I was a kid. Uh, now, years later to go back and speak. So that was a very touching moment for me to be back in that campus. But having said that, I think um, one of the other biggest moment was um, seeing some people who are really going through difficulties and challenges for the faith. Um, I saw one person, I have a picture um, with me, uh, I took with this person, um, his uh, left ear half is not there because somebody cut his uh, ears off for his faith uh, because he is a Christian or he's a believer. Uh, but the good thing is the person who cut his ear off now has repented and you know that's what they told me. So, but still, uh, this person is dealing with issues related to that, but he's okay. So, it was very humbling and uh, very touching to see somebody. Normally, I've read a lot about it. I've heard a lot about it. People who have gone through persecution and challenges and trouble in their life or, you know, because sometimes people oppose and uh, people, you know, are not happy with uh, what other people are believing. Uh, 
I've heard about that, but this is a reality where I'm standing in front of somebody or standing with somebody who is who has actually endured that um, uh, problem. So I usually say this is the mark of that suffering was there. Um, and that's one example. There were many others who have gone through very much challenging situations and very much challenging, um, you know, there were different challenges they have faced. And just to hear them and just to understand what they're going through was a very humbling experience. And also to just... Uh, um, reflect and just be thankful to God for all the privileges and all the blessings we experience. A lot of things we take for granted. For example, like tomorrow we have the church service and um, uh, as far as I know we are just going to go there and gather and um, sing songs and praise God and you know do all the things. Uh, but there are many places where people cannot even gather together. Um, I met um, some pastors whose churches have not met for like three to four years now, or, you know, uh, because initially COVID was there, but then there is also a problem. If they gather, you know, some people will come and create problem. Police can come and arrest them and put them behind the jail and all those, oh, because of all those challenges, they don't even gather now. They can't gather. It's not like they don't want to. So normally they do Zoom or they just, um, you know, have some alternative arrangements, so they can't come and meet as a church on Sundays um, or, or for, for that matter any day. So that just uh, gives me a perspective that how much we should be thankful for all the freedom and all the other privileges we enjoy in our own life. Many times we take those things for granted. Uh, we just think that it's, it's our right or it's our, we are entitled for that. But just remembering that there are so many people, it's not, just not one country, I'm not just talking about India, but there are other other places too where the situation is maybe worse than that, what I just said. But it's, it's a reality and um, just being there and just uh, um, listening to them and just uh, seeing them and hearing their stories is uh, very much moving and also it, it I think it gives uh, personally a new level of appreciation for all the blessings and everything we enjoy. Sometimes we are like, you know, complaining about little, little things and we get upset about uh, little things. But it is always uh, important to remember that, uh, uh, you know, what we are experiencing and what we have is, uh, it's a privilege. So, so those things really stood out and, uh, you know, I knew these things, but this just now comes more fresh and uh, more becomes more relevant as you have as you go through these situations. So. so, are there any like final things or like things you want to add to just like summarize the whole trip? Um, I don't know. I think there are so many things I can talk for hours because it was almost uh, um, three weeks, almost three weeks of a travel. But um, I will just say that um, through this trip, what I learned is. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm actually, uh, my next newsletter, which will be coming, which, which may have already come out by the time um, this episode comes out, is about homesickness. Um, so I, one thing I experienced during the time when I was, as I said, I was a little bit not feeling well, I experienced something like homesickness. I just wanted to like, even though my desire and my passion to serve others was there, but still I was feeling a little bit of a weirdness and a desire to be back home. Right? Come, and, like, be come from home. But that gave me a new reflection. I was thinking about uh, the fact that we are all temporary in this world, right? But, you know, our final our destiny is in the Bible teaches us that we are citizen. Our citizenship is in heaven. We are waiting to go there. So that gives a new perspective about um, how things can change in this world. A small sickness or some small challenge can make a big difference in our life. But at the same time, it also gives this great hope, right, that um, all the challenges are temporary in nature. Because if you get sick, you know, maybe in a few days you will recover. Um, all the problems and challenges of this world are temporary, but there is a uh, something permanent we are looking forward to. That's our eternal hope. 
Uh, but then, as I said earlier, uh, one of the things which really stood out to me was just be thankful. You know, sometimes um, people go to church and they are not happy with the music, they are not happy that the song uh, didn't go well, or they are not happy about many, many things. But I think I got a new perspective where it's not about who is performing what or doing what. It's all about you know, me ensuring that I'm truthfully worshiping the Lord or praising God and, you know, using the time and opportunity I have in my life to just be thankful in the presence of the Lord and don't worry about a lot of things uh, which are which are important but not very important in my, in my view uh, because I saw people um, praising God in different circumstances, different uh, situations um, and they are happy about it. They are not uh, sorrowful about it. I saw people who are, you know, serving the Lord in very challenging places, and they are not going to. They said they are going to not going to turn back or anything like that. They are going to just continue. So, so that brings us this thought about okay, um, even in the midst of difficulties, if they are doing that much, how much more we should be doing? And, uh, you know, that gives us this motivation, right, to uh, press on and move forward and go ahead and don't worry about it. Um, when I was traveling, I was on some medication because of some things which flared up before I went, started my journey. But I wasn't worried about any of those things. It was like, okay, I was full trust that God will take care of everything. But just move on and move on and go forward. And uh, I think that's what uh, one thing I learned from pretty much all the people or many people I met. Uh, hold on and move on with the purpose you have in life and you are going to see that uh, God will uh, just uh, help you through these things. Um, and then I, I want to also tell that, you know, sometimes uh, we, we can delay stuff in life. You know, we can say, okay, I will do when things get better or we maybe better time. Uh, but one thing I learned and I want to just tell that don't wait for better times, you know, because uh, as long as you have the strength, energy uh, and the capacity to do something, just do it. If you want to go somewhere and if you, if you can go, go. Uh, because tomorrow is not in our hands. Who knows, right. tomorrow we will have a better time or worse time, right? So don't, don't just uh, always look for the perfect timing because um, many times we think if the timing is perfect, everything is perfect, everything will be good. No, actually we don't operate that way. We operate by the grace of God and um, His grace is sufficient for us. Uh, so the thing is, even in our weakness and when we are not 100%, everything is not perfect, we rely on the uh, mercy and grace of God and we move forward as you know Paul says. Uh, you know, he begged with God for, you know, deliverance from the, the challenge he was having in life. But God said, my grace is sufficient for you. So a lot of times I think we have to just rely on God's grace to carry us forward and take us forward. And not look for everything to be in the perfect place before we can do anything. I don't think if I would have waited for the perfect timing of everything to be perfect settle everything to be good, could have done anything in life, right? So my encouragement and one more, once, once more I learned and one thing which, I, which God really emphasized is uh, just, just do what you can do and uh, move on and just uh, trust in God and trust in the grace of God and God's grace will lead and it is leading people across the world and it will lead you and it will guide you and don't shy away from uh, the heavenly assignments which God gives in our life. So, thank you for sharing. And to all our viewers, I hope you uh, learned some things from my dad's experiences as he was traveling. So, thank you for sharing. And to our listeners, um, thank you for listening. Um, in the coming weeks, we'll be coming back with more Driving Talk episodes. And uh, we'll be talking about more different different topics. Um, as we said in the beginning, um, Thriving Talk is available on many different platforms. So, um, don't forget to Follow or subscribe to Thriving Talk on your favorite platform so you can receive the new episodes as they come out. 
And also remember, Evan and Dad mentioned about the newsletter, and um, he posts that once a month, right? Yeah. Yeah. So now it's once a month. Yeah. Because of all the other <laughs> things which are going on. Yeah. I'm writing. I'm trying to uh, write. Also write some things, some books, and also. Yeah, so once a month, and in that he shares a lot of different things. So make feel free to subscribe to the newsletter. The link will be in the show notes. Um, so thank you for listening, and um, we'll be coming back. But until then, um, God bless you, and keep you all, everyone safe. Thank you. God bless you all.